friend or foe, here's your look at the new Jack Pacific. Godzilla King of the Monsters, this is Godzilla and Mothra. Godzilla King of the Monsters follows the heroic efforts of the cryptozoological agency Monarch and its members face off against the battery of God-sized monsters, including the mighty Godzilla, who collides with Mothra, Rodan, and the ultimate nemesis, the three-headed King Ghidorah. When these ancient super-species, thought to be mere myths, rise again, they all vie for supremacy, leaving humanity's very existence hanging in the balance. All right, kiddies, just before we feast our eyes on these figures, let's first figure out how tall these stand. Well, we've already been there, of course, two times before. When we had a look at Godzilla, this one's just another slight variation. The Godzilla stands at 3.6. 3.6 right there, which in centimeters works out to be, let me go ahead and do that for you, 9.1 centimeters tall. Mothra, of course, is going to be a little bit smaller, considerably taller, or considerably smaller, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and figure out how small she stands. Now, I'm going to actually go rather instead to the top of her wings instead of her body, because her body obviously is, not, is the smallest aspect of the figure. So to the very top of Mothra's wings, you're looking at a figure that's 3.8. 3.8 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 9.8 centimeters tall, again, to the top of her wings. I'm not quite sure where the other Godzilla went, but I can show you the size comparisons. Yes, they are in fact the exact same Godzilla to one another. And also for some size comparisons, we'll bring in the other figures that we had a look at. Here is the very mighty Rodan, put him right there. Uh, a little bit of a smaller smaller wingspan, it seems, to Mothra. This one I can actually stand. There we go. And then the very large, way in the background, I'll have to put it, is King Ghidorah. Still kind of have a problem with its wings. The wings, unfortunately, uh, they're just, again, very loose. Uh, mine, unfortunately, just are very, very loose. So it's kind of hard to keep the wings span from not dropping forward. But again, well, there it is right there. There is the very mighty King Ghidorah. While still keeping that Godzilla in frame, I'm going to do some comparisons of those in a second. I want to show you the backdrop that comes included with the Godzilla and Mothra, a sort of an ancient ruins temple. Sort of actually looks like the exact same ruins that was lo that was in the uh, the central location in the film, the ruins which again kind of looked very similar to this just to also do a comparison between this one and here's the one i believe this came with rodan and uh, then this was the one that came with king Ghidorah. so you can see the examples the three different backdrops that are available depending on which again which pieces you get or if you're lucky enough to pick up all three of these um, these are also now being released to stores as we speak. The initial release date on all of these was April 1st. So by the time you probably are seeing this video, April 1st has come and now you should be able to find these in local stores. Good luck. Happy hunting. So let's have a look at the two Godzillas. I did promise I was going to keep the one in in check. I don't know really where I put the other one, but I can tell you it pretty much would look like this one right here, minus the blue on the fins and the blue in the eyes. The other one is just basically all this coloring here. The one, however, that comes included with Mothra, might I say, is a very colorful looking presentation here of Godzilla. Same sort of coloring here. Again, there's the two side by side. Very much the same coloring on the skin, but where the contrast does certainly come in is the coloring of the fins, the scales, the spikes protruding out from its spine. One is a blue, a cool blue color. This one here is a fiery reddish orange. Still like the fact that they also put the gray in there as well. It just really kind of looks like it's starting to pulsate and glow at the outer tips of the spikes, still staying somewhat cooler closer to its skin. This Godzilla also has some additional paint that's been added to its torso, primarily in its stomach, and running down the sides of its legs and its tail. The eyes have also now been swapped instead of a blue, given again that fiery orangey color. Like in the look of the contrast of all of these, I also like the fact too that we didn't get the exact same Godzilla. 
I know we did by really the mold, but at least from the paint standpoint, we didn't simply just get like this Godzilla packed with every single creature release paired with its creature counterpart. So we'll move that one out of the way here. Uh, the posability on this Godzilla is the same as the others. The head rotates back and forth. R really could rotate all the way around if you wanted it to. There's a close-up look at its face once again. Very nice molds on all of these. The arms move back and forth, and the legs also move back and forth. And yes, I did not forget, there's the tail articulation as well. Rotates all the way around with a secondary rotation in the tail. Rotating that tail also all the way around. So there's Godzilla, a fine, splendorous little creature to be paired, of course, with another creature. This is Mothra. Now, Mothra, again, a smaller scaled figure. She's very small when it comes to like the, the actual main body. They've done a best job to paint at least, at the very least, the blue in the eyes. The rest of the body is sort of just kind of kept to kind of this caramel brown color. I don't know if I would feel that added paint should have been included there as well. I mean, for its smart size, Mothra is a very small looking character. Where its size comes into play is, of course, the wings. Now the wings appear to be, they look like they are stickers that have been applied to the same brown color as the body. The wings actually reflect a fair bit of light, so let me just see if I can angle it such a way where I'm not going to be blinding all of you. That would be a shame. It almost kind of looks like it has an eye, doesn't it? Right there. And a, and a series of teeth right there as well. In fact, actually I'm starting to kind of see a lot of things in here. Little skulls, for example. Teeth, and again, that big giant eye. Uh, there's what the back side looks like. It's the same as the front side. And again, just do a couple of comparisons so that you guys can see. So you can see what you're getting yourselves into if you want to be picking these ones up for yourself. There is uh, Mothra again next to, next to Rodan. And I guess the sizing for the bodies is about the same. Uh, Rodan, of course, is benefiting from the fact that the wings are a continuation of mold to its body. In fact, its body is molded right into the rest of its wings. It had posability, if you can remember, in the legs, the head, and of course the wings flap back and forth. There goes the special effect budget for the whole entire week. Uh, Mothra does have posability. It's actually located in these ball joints that are attaching the wings to the, I guess that would be the thorax section of Mothra. It allows the wings to rotate all the way around, and in theory give you all the same flexibility and posability that ball joints would essentially give you. Uh, you can rotate them back and forth. Again, it sort of falls into the same problem that I guess really all the flying creatures, whether it be Rodan or again bringing in the very mighty, I love the wingspan on this guy, the very cool looking King Ghidorah. Uh, all of these do work quite well if you are flying them, hanging them down say from the top of a ceiling. Uh, unfortunately, though, Mothra sort of has that same problem. You can't stand her upright, say, on her legs, because the wingspan, of course, will topple the figure over. You sort of have to kind of rest her, rest her on her legs, whether it be what you would consider to be four legs, or if you look closely, it's actually made up of two sets of legs, four on the top, two on the bottom, giving you a total of six legs. So you sort of have to, if you plan on displaying her, you may want to actually just keep her on all sixes, wanted to say fours, and you can display her that way. I mean, it's not probably not the most creative, most exciting of ways, likely much like what I have planned for King Ghidorah and what I likely will have also planned for Rodan. I'm probably going to want to display these, take a little bit of fishing line, wrap it around, probably could wrap it around this section here where fishing line is good too because it's, it shows clear, hanging it from a ceiling, almost until you really like look closely at it it looks like they're just floating they're just floating in air i'll probably end up doing that because i really do like what they've done with these pieces it's just the the shame to these is that they're so the, the wingspan is so broad that displaying them again just standing on their legs can be a little bit trickier either way though a really nice again setup 
Jack Pacific really has planned a whole slew of Godzilla figures. We've only looked at really the small ones, and believe you me, this is the this is the beginning of a much grander scale when we start looking at some of the bigger pieces that they're releasing as well. A big thank you, by the way, to Jack Pacific for sending these also my way. But when we look at the larger pieces, you can really see there's a whole slew of stuff lined up for the upcoming Godzilla film. So, friend or foe, we'll have to wait and see when Godzilla King of the Monsters finally comes to theaters. I believe it is the first week or second week of May it's going to be coming out. So, can't wait for that. It's going to be like the first big summer blockbuster of the year. And again, I'll probably be in line quickly to want to see the film. I've always been a big fan of Godzilla growing up with the original Toho films, which always seem to appear for me Sunday afternoons. It seemed always Sunday afternoons was Godzilla in, in my household. Usually they would do back-to-back -to -back Toho films, and you could see Godzilla, of course, fighting and battling the various creatures that would try to destroy Tokyo. Uh, now, you don't have to wait necessarily till May to watch Godzilla King of, the King of the Monsters. If you are anxious to grab these for yourself, they will be available now in, in retail stores and toy stores alike. Godzilla Day is hitting toy stores in April, April 1st to be exact. So by the time you, you guys are watching reviews like these, kind of started before, and now we're leading into now the retail release of these toys, we're going to be, again, having a whole look at a whole slew of upcoming Godzilla reviews. So stay tuned for that. Now hold the phone here. Hold on a second. You're saying to me, somebody just yelled out, I heard in the back of the audience, you were doing Godzilla reviews? Oh man, where have you been? Feel free to go back. I did actually do the review of Rodan and King Ghidorah in a pre series of two previous reviews, They're probably about a week or so old. So you may want to go back and just check those out. And like I said, we're going to be doing, thanks to the folks at Jack Pacific, a whole look at a whole lineup of new Godzilla King of the Monsters toys. Stay tuned for those. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.